One of the things you must nail in order to make your orchestral music sound interesting and realistic is this, the mod wheel expression uh, curves. Now, if you have no idea what they are, pretty much they are the reason why my music sounds like this. Pretty much the mod wheel is, the, like this curve you see here is mod wheel movements which I drew for the DAW to follow. And I'm gonna explain you how you can do the same, but first let me explain you what the mod wheel is responsible for. So you know that if you play a certain, you know, velocity on short notes, you know, you get a louder sound compared to low velocities, right? It's not only louder, it's actually the sample of this instrument being played harder or softer. Now we're talking about string instruments, so when we have high velocity, the uh, instrument is being played with a stronger bow movement, so that produces a different sound than a softer bow movement. So it's an entire different sound. It's not only a matter of reducing volume when you reduce the velocity with these sample libraries. The same applies to sustained instruments, sustained articulations and legatos and yeah, long notes like that. But if you notice in most orchestral libraries, when you have long notes like long legatos, um, sustains, etc., when you tweak your velocity, it will not impact how soft or hard the sound is. That is impacted by the mod wheel movement. So for example, say I'm playing this chord. You notice it became you know, softer and harder and softer and harder. That was because I was moving my mod wheel on my keyboard, which you cannot see right now, but this thing here. Now, the mod wheel is what is responsible for making things sound soft or hard. And uh, it's, it takes action on sustained elements, on sustained articulations, because for sustained articulations, you can tweak the softness or hard, like, uh, hardness, I guess, uh, of the note being played as the note is playing. That's something you cannot do with velocity notes, like with the short notes, because like staccatos, it's just one movement, you know, while playing sustain, it's a constant motion. So you can actually make it harder or softer. And that's what the module does. That's why it's useful. And that's why you should always use it, because whenever orchestral music is being performed, it's being performed like that. It's not all the orchestra keeps playing the same intensity, which is the hardest intensity ever. But every instrument is going to change intensity as it goes. Pretty much like when you're singing, I'm changing my intensity there, not there. because that's not real singing, you know? So that's how you want to process every single one of your instruments. Now, how do you do that in Alpha Studio? Well, there is a way. If people told you there is no way to do this in Alpha Studio, they totally have no idea what they're talking about, and they probably haven't read the manual. So right now, I'm going to explain you how to do that in Alpha Studio. Uh, here I'm using BRSO Articulate, and there is one instance of contact and many different instances of BRSO Articulate connected to my contact. So each one is a different instrument. Uh, if you have no idea what, how I set this up like this, check out my videos about how I set my orchestral template in Apple Studio. I'm going to leave it down below in the description. But yeah, so I have a BRSO Articulate instance for every instrument. Now, this in the BRSO Articulate, the cool thing is that many parameters like the mod wheel and expression are already set up. So you can just tweak them here. You can link this to your keyboard, um, which is something I recommend. Go on your mod wheel parameter, do override generic link, move your mod wheel, and now every single instance of VRSO Articulate is gonna have you know, this parameter linked to the mod wheel of your keyboard. So when you select an instance, you move it around. But say you want to tweak it here, you want to draw the curves here. Well, you can go here, right-click, do edit events in piano roll, and this is what you get. You know, you, Usually you would get this to be empty or something, unless you already tweaked it, you know. Um, you get this, and now you can draw your curves, pretty much. So you can have an impact on the, on the song as it goes, on the, on the instrument, as the song goes. Now, the way in which you can draw, like, the, the, this pretty much has the precision that you set here with the snap. You know, so if I set the snap to one third, one third, one second beat, this is the precision I have. If I want to ignore the precision, I press Alt and I draw. You know, and that makes me gives me the freedom to do whatever the hell I want, pretty much. Now, when you draw these things, there is no rule. You know, it's not. People ask me sometimes, "Hey, how do you draw your mod wheel curves, whatever?" So I just show you how I activate it. 
but it's not like a follow-up principle in terms of drawing this. This is like asking someone, hey, how do you draw the sky? How do you draw a tree? You do it in the way that you feel is natural for you. You do it in a way that you feel is, makes sense for you. So as, as I was writing this song, I was like, playing around with these chords and I felt like, oh, if they rise and fall like this, then, you know, that's what I want, you know? It's different for every song. This, there's no way to, you know, follow a pattern or whatever. Like, do whatever you think is right for you. A good idea to you know, get something good to do is to listen to orchestral music, like real orchestral music, uh, concertos and whatever, and really listen to how the string instruments are being played. Of course, you will never have a module of curves that, that is like this. This will be very bad and stupid. You know, it doesn't make sense. But you want something that is more like flowing and et cetera. And uh, if you listen to real concertos, you can really listen to the dynamics of every instrument, the dynamics of the strings, of the brass and everything, and notice how they go about, you know, rising and falling in terms of the dynamics. Usually, I'm way more, I do way more curves with this, with the dynamics, uh, on chords than on melodies. On melodies, I will do them, but not too heavy, you know, because I want the melodies to always be hearable. So for example, here there is one, you know, example of that. <laughs> well, this is a bad, you know, bad, bad, badly written melody here, but as you see here, I'm not doing crazy things. I'm just, you know, because I want the melody to be distinguishable. So I wanted it to be played hard compared to the chords, which are going soft, hard, soft, hard, you know? So you can also use the mod wheel to give, give certain elements a boost because they are played harder than others that are being played softly. Uh, that's very important. The mod wheel movement can also be recorded by moving your mod wheel on your keyboard. If you link this to your BR so Articulate or MIDI out, we're gonna see how to link this to the MIDI out later, but say you linked it to your mod BR so Articulate and you want to tweak how this looks, you can record it, you go here, press on this record button, Right click it to make sure that you have automation selected here as recording uh, parameter. And then you just play your song or your track and as it plays you move it around after selecting your instrument. If you notice here, our curves just changed to match what we just recorded. You can also record this uh, while you play in notes. So, you know, there's also another way, by the way, in which you can activate the mod wheel, uh, which isn't very intelligent. In my opinion, it's best to use these things. You can go here on current project, though, go on generators. Uh, let's, for example, select uh, our contact here, group B. Uh, <laughs> as you see here, these are all the MIDI parameters inside our contact group B. So in this case, I'm not entirely sure how that will work because we have many different libraries in this contact. But say we only had this first one, then surely here on group B, the mod wheel would be this MIDI CC one modulation wheel. So you can go here and you can do the same thing we did for the dynamics on BRS Articulate. You can link it to the controller, you can override generic link, or you can do edit events in general role. But it's much more intelligent to actually have an instance of BRSO and tweak your mod wheel here, or to have a MIDI out. And let's see how you can activate your mod wheel and expression and all those things in your MIDI out as opposed to BRSO Articulate. Now, say you don't have BRSO Articulate and you don't want to download it for some reason, that's okay. Uh, by the way, I made a tutorial about how I set this one up, how I, how I you know, use BRSO Articulate on FL Studio, and you can find it on my channel. But say you're using the MIDI, MIDI out instead, instead of BRSO Articulate. The MIDI out looks like this. So how do you set up the mod wheel in the MIDI out? Well, here's what the mod wheel is. The mod wheel, like many other parameters, is a MIDI CC, MIDI control command, uh, which means, say for example, we have this um, linked to our strings here. So it's like port one, channel one. Say we want to activate the module on this MIDI out. Well, we'll go here, right click on one of these knobs, which is free, and we set configure. Um, mod wheel, mod short name. This is, you know, where you can set your CCs. Now, every parameter is a, spe is a specific, specific CC. The mod wheel parameter or dynamics is the CC number one in every library. So now, this is gonna be my CC um, one, which is the mod wheel. So now, if I move this around, the mod wheel is going to change, the dynamics are going to change and everything. So that's how I set it up. Now I can go here and do edit events in panel roll. 
If edit events in piano roll is not available, you can do edit events, draw a random curve, and then you can go here and you will find what you drew, you know, here around, among the different parameters. Uh, another cool thing is that, you know, if you go on edit events, you can do copy paste stuff. So I can take this, you know, this is not very advanced though. Like in FL Studio, this is a thing that, the, the, one of the very few things that made me, make me dread FL Studio is the fact that uh, this, you know, like this um, window here where you can actually copy paste and do stuff on the module uh, is not ideal. Like there's, it, it's a bit rudimental. So I prefer to use the one in the piano roll, which is still not the best thing ever. Like surely in Cubase, there's probably better ways to edit your module. But even here, like, there's ways to do that. Like, for example, say I have this and I, you know, I just want to reduce all of it by a small margin. I can press Control X, sorry, Alt X. And then I can use this, part, this uh, you know, window to tweak it. You know, I have this, I can do this. I can reduce the tension. I can increase the tension, you know, so you have, you can tweak it. You can copy paste it, but it's, you know, it's more flexible, you know, under DWs, but you can do that. So as you see, as you saw, we went here, we did this for the module. Now, there's also, also another parameter called the expression. And the expression, in most libraries, handles uh, volume. It's another volume knob, if you will. Now, I can never remember if uh, the expression is CC7 or 11. I think it was 11. So let's do exp expression. So now, if we move, like if we play this, you see this like volume. It's not like the mod wheel, where it changes how soft or hard it's being played. The expression is just turns the volume up, turns the volume down. So you can use this as an additional parameter as to do volume automations with MIDI control commands or with curves. Uh, there's also the volume CC, which is CC7, I think. So volume really is another volume. Uh, knob and when you when you tweak volume you see it in contact like when you tweak it it should yeah it decreases the volume slider on contact so this one here you see it it decreases or decreases while expression is not linked to this volume slider but it still impacts volume of the library itself uh, I generally only use module expression I use it sometimes but not often and when I do use expression Personally, I don't draw curves like this, you know, I will do static curves like this. That's to set, you know, volume of an instrument in a specific section. Like maybe this is the breakdown. So I have the strings go here and this is like, I don't know, the, the curves. So the strings go high, whatever. So I don't use it to, you know, do the natural soft hard sound because I do that with the mod wheel, you know. Uh, and uh, yeah, those, that's, that's the way in which you set them up. Once again, if you want to understand how to link contact, like different instruments inside of a contact to different MIDI outs like this, check out my tutorial about how I set up my orchestral template in FL Studio. And also, I highly recommend using BRSO Articulate for these things and other things as well, because of the reasons that I mentioned in the video I made about BRSO Articulate. But yeah, that's how I set up my mod wheel. Very basic stuff. And again, there isn't a way in which you can write, draw these curves in your curves. It's just something that needs to go to taste. And you also need to understand how the instruments are played, you know? So really go listen to orchestral music, like purely orchestral, analyze it, listen to the dynamics, and uh, try to use that as much as possible on every single instrument. That's why I predicate not using like ensemble patches as much like as you see here i'm using an ensemble but also using a basses patch cellos violas first violins second violins and the reason is that every one of these has a slightly different mod wheel going on everyone is has a slightly different intensity and they blend together and the sum of all these in those intensity changes and everything makes it sound like you heard before But yeah, this is all for this tutorial. This was a basic one. If you want to learn more advanced stuff, check out my other tutorials on orchestration in the playlist that comes after this video is over. And uh, if you want to learn even more, I recommend you checking out the Evelyn course Cinematic Music from Idea to Finish Recording. I'm going to leave that in the description of this video. And I'm going to see you this week with a new tutorial, maybe. Uh, bye bye for now.